Hi, this is Hugh for Tone Twins TV and we've got a short DIY project for you this week. My friend Darren Charles from The God Sticks sent me over this Timmy Overdrive pedal and it has a slight problem. It works fine when it's plugged into a DC socket, but when he tries to run it off a battery, there's no light coming on and there's no sound coming out. So I've got to try and figure out why that is, see if I can fix it. And hopefully any lessons that we learn from this project can be applied generally to pedals of this sort. As you can see, I've hooked up the Timmy to a DC supply and if I switch it on, the blue light comes on, boutique blue, always a good sign. Uh, I've got a cable here which is plugged into it. If I touch the end, yeah, passing signal. That's all working. Okay, let's switch it off. Unplug the DC supply. Switch it back on again. Nothing. Okay, we're going to open this up now and see exactly what's going on inside. Just going to plug it back in. Yep, blue light is on. Let's get a multimeter on this. Right, I've got my multimeter set on 20 volts on the DC setting. With my negative, I can just chuck that into one of the screw holes and it'll make contact with the chassis. So, uh, if I measure the output of this little DC socket there, 9.36, and there's a little bridging wire which takes it over to the circuit board, and that's absolutely fine. And if I measure the voltage on the op amp, yeah, everything looks exactly as it should. Be nothing on this last one. Yeah, okay, this is all absolutely fine. So let's see what happens when we uh, unplug the DC supply and we're on battery power only. Okay, if I touch the contact which is hidden underneath this little link wire, that's the connection from the battery. Okay, I'm seeing 8.1 volts, that's good. Now, when I measure the output, this is the little DC socket, I'm seeing zero volts and I'm seeing nothing going into the circuit. Okay, this is going to be relatively straightforward. What it means is that there's something wrong with this DC socket. The way these things work is that the both the, the DC supply and the battery are connected to these little DC sockets and it'll default to the battery connection when there's nothing plugged into the DC socket and as soon as the DC socket is plugged in it switches off the battery connection so that your battery doesn't run down when it's not needed. So what has happened I think is there's a little switching mechanism within this DC uh, socket and the little switches probably uh, gone faulty or it's broken and we're going to need to replace this. So that's the next job. Okay the first thing I'm going to do is try and disconnect this little bridging wire from the socket. I'm going to keep my soldering on away from any delicate components. nicely. Right, that was the easy bit. Now what I've got to do is uh, get 
this circuit board moved out of the way and that's going to mean moving these sockets as well and it's going to mean taking the knobs off on the other side. Right, there's really not much room to play with in here. Uh, there are three connections inside. One red wire from the battery and then the negative connection to the two black wires to the third uh, solder tag of the DC socket. So I'm going to try and get this out as cleanly as possible. Do the other one. I think I'm gonna undo this uh, securing nut slightly and just twist this round so uh, the wires are a little bit easier to access. Okay, I can get inside there just about now. So probably be quite hard to see on the camera, but. Uh, it's just doing some desoldering, so nothing too exciting. Okay, unbroken DC socket. This large one here is the negative connection, this one here is the battery connection, and this is the power output tag that goes to the circuit board. So we're just going to get a new one of these now, and we're going to solder it in. And there's our new socket. These are quite easy to find online, you can find them from suppliers on eBay, uh, I think I get mine from generally get them from Rapid Electronics in the UK but most pedal parts suppliers will sell these and it should just be a direct replacement for the old one okay so the first thing I'm going to do is put the socket, the new socket in and I'm going to tighten the nut just sufficiently to hold it in position with the negative connection upright so I can solder those two black cables on relatively easily. It looks quite brutal but it should be absolutely fine. So this will twist around quite easily but it's just tight enough to, to hold it in position to get the little black wires in and get them soldered neatly. that easy actually but uh, there's so little wire to play with in there but I got them on now so it's going to solder it. Okay that's the negative connection done. Just going to swivel this DC socket around. Might need to Slackle it off a little bit first. And now I'm going to get the red battery wire on. Okay, that's the second wire on the uh, DC socket. And I'm just going to spin it around very slightly now. Tighten the nut. Okay, that's 
seems pretty good. Now I've got to line up all these pot shafts. And they push back through. Got that in position. I'm just going to put the uh, nuts on fairly loosely just to hold the circuit board in position. Don't want to really tighten everything up until I'm absolutely sure that everything is working correctly. Okay, so everything's secured back down nicely and I'm just going to reinstate this uh, power cable. It's just a little jumper that goes across to the PCB. Okay, just the fiddly job of getting these uh, jack sockets back in. Okay. Okay, I think we can test this now. Just connect the battery. Input socket. And we've got a blue light. Let's just uh, verify some voltages. Okay, so eight volts, eight volts on the board, Okay, we're all good. This should be working absolutely fine. Obviously do an audio test, but uh, this pedal looks to be fixed. What I need to do now is replace the little uh, nylon clip that was holding the battery wire to the, uh, the input socket here. And I just got to tighten up everything and put the, uh, put the knobs back on. So it's fixed and it's good to go back to Darren and uh, hopefully it's going to be reliable from now on. It was a fun little project, um, just required a bit of logical thinking, testing with a multimeter and although the, the fix itself was a little bit fiddly because everything is so tightly packed in there, uh, it's not too difficult and I would say well within the capabilities of most DIYers. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget to subscribe. And Ed and I will be back very, very soon with more vintage and DIY content. Dabble.